G'day, this is the Inner Chief Podcast and welcome to the 2019 Winter Wisdom Series, a collection of the best of the best from our first 128 episodes of the Inner Chief Podcast. And Winter Wisdom, you might be asking if you're in the boiling hot north right now, well, Never forget, we are from Australia, and right now it is absolutely freezing. Even the penguins are shivering. In this week's Winter Wisdom series, we are going to look all at the top five books recommended by all of the great chiefs and gurus that have been on this show. We're going to look at these top five books in a little bit of detail and hear what the chiefs had to say about each of them. I'm your host, Craig Layton, and I believe that if you want more clarity, confidence, and influence at work, and ultimately to get your dream job faster, then learning from the masters, coupled with consistent personal growth, is instrumental. Every Thursday, I'll bring you a deep diving interview with a CEO or guru that reveals their inner secrets to success. And every Monday, I post a short, sharp mini-sode with the best advice I can muster to help you achieve your career and life goals. This is about becoming your greatest self and revealing to the world your true inner chief. Now, chief, if you're yet to rate the episode and subscribe, I hope you'll do so soon. It helps others see the magnificent value that the chiefs and gurus on the show bring to their life and career. So make sure you hit subscribe on your podcast app now. Give it a five-star rating if you think it's worthy and leave a short review about your favorite episode. Now, Chief, are you working your tail off doing everything you can to be the best professional but still finding perhaps you're not getting in front? And you just don't know why. You're, you're not sure if it's a relationship with your boss that's costing you, maybe your routines and your processes, maybe you don't have the right network or the right skills, maybe you don't have the right track record, whatever it is. Sometimes it's hard to know what exactly might be costing you a promotion. So what I've done is created the Chief Maker Career Scorecard. It's a 25 question survey that gives you a free automated report about your precise situation. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to get ahead and design a roadmap for your dream job and life. As I said, it's totally free. I've automated the whole process so anybody can go and do it. Just go to chiefmaker.com.au and at the top, click Career Scorecard. Righto, Chief. First cab off the rank in our top five, going from one to five, number one being the most popular This one was a clear winner, and it was a combination of Built to Last and Good to Great by Jim Collins. These books were recommended by Rob Patterson of Parkins Lane, Brad Gordon, formerly of Acacia Mining, Daniel Herbert of SSKB and Wallaby Great, and Daniel Hunter of HealthShare New South Wales. Now, not only that, but a number of other CEOs and gurus mentioned it throughout their episodes. So, These are really, really important books. And here's what Rob Patterson had to say. I read that in one rain-delayed session of an ashes test at the MCG. Yeah, there you go. And I just consumed it. I couldn't – I think it – you know, like sometimes books come at the right time. Mm. And for me, you know, obviously it was quite a long rain delay. Yes. (laughs) I read it. It just – it gave me a really good framework to work through strategy Mm. with. You know, and and a lot of books that have – lend heavily from it. Simon Sinek, you know, it starts with why, you know, I think if you read Built to Last, you may not have absolutely drawn that from it, but it's a critical part of it. Mm, mm. You know, and there's a lot of books like yeah, Simon Sinek, I really enjoy that as well. But yeah, Built to Last is the one that often, particularly younger members of, of management, if they're looking where to start, that's a really yeah. good place to start. So why should you read these books? Well, remember, they're not just about visionary products or visionary leaders, they're about visionary companies and what it is that makes the truly exceptional companies different from others. So if you're in a leadership role or starting your own business, there is really no better blueprint for a great organization from the very beginning. And I can tell you from personal experience that Jim Collins walks the walk. I asked him to come on the Inner Chief podcast last year and he replied with a personal handwritten note 
apologizing that he couldn't find the time to come on the show. But you know what? It's those little touches. I get it. The man is an incredibly busy human. And you know what? Wonderful that he took the time to do that. And it shows that he is living the values that he espouses in the books that he writes. Second book off the rank goes to another dual listing, which was Sapiens and Homo Deus by Yuval Noah Harari. These two books are recommended by board member and author Nicolette Rubenstein, her husband and CEO of Infomedia, Jonathan Rubenstein, and Daniel Herbert once again. And also, once again, a number of other chiefs and gurus mentioned it throughout their episodes. Here is what Nicolette and Jonathan both had to say in episode 117 and episode 89. My favourite book at the moment is the Yuval Harari Homo Deus, and it really changed my perspective on the future. Mm. And I think that's really important, particularly for sort of middle executives in yep. terms of having a, a view on the big picture. I'm probably going to give a slightly spurious one because it's not a leadership book, but it's a book that uh, I think is one of the greatest books I've read ever. And it's written by a guy called Yuval Noah Harari, and it's Homer Deus. And Homer Deus, uh, he wrote the first book, which was Sapiens, and the second book, which was Homer Deus. That's an incredibly insightful book, which is cross-functional. This guy has the most incredible, broad insight around human behavior, around anthropology, around uh, psych- psychological impacts and technology. You know, th- there are many chapters around uh, the, the evolution of human beings. And I think that, you know, we are, we are at the end of the day, our behaviors. He talks about, you know, should we eat meat? As an example, there's a great chapter on, on vegetarianism. Well, actually, it wasn't on veg. It's around as a sentient being, do we have the right to kill animals? And I have a, a my, my wife and kids are all vegetarian. They've never eaten meat or fish in their entire life. And this was the best articulated uh, chapter that I've read on why one should or shouldn't kill animals. But the whole book to me is an incredible uh, journey on, on, on mankind and where it could be going. And the insight around that and leadership, I think there's a, a close correlation between how one think about how, how one acts as a human being in the society, in the world we live in, but also where we might be going and some of the impacts that technology might have on us as a society and as individuals. Now, I've read Sapiens and I'm halfway through Homo Deus and I have to agree They are just profoundly interesting books that make you question so much about your own belief systems and the world and and how it works. It is fundamental for building not only self-awareness, but understanding your role in the world. They're not business books. They're a profound study into human history, and they draw insights from biology, anthropology, paleontology, and economics with a good scientific basis. And so they explore how history has shaped our societies and even our personalities. It's just a really wonderful way of bringing forward to our attention how things really work and what might be the future for humans. That's what's covered in Homer Deus. They're both life-changing reads, I suppose, and I think they're very, very worthy uh, winners of number two on the top five list. Number three on the top five list is The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni and a number of his other titles also got a mention. But The Five Dysfunctions of a Team was recommended by Angela Buglass of Trilogy International, Greg Steele of Arcadis. And back in the very first episode of The Inner Chief, CEO of Sydney Water, Kevin Young recommended another book by Patrick, The Advantage. Here's what Angela Buglass had to say back in episode 19. The one I read most recently was The Five um, Dysfunctions of a Team. Mm, Uh, (laughs) I found it fascinating. It's a really quick read. Mm. Uh, He's going to have to give me some sort of commission. uh, Or or the CEOs have all mentioned him, right? (laughs) Exactly. And I I mean, it's an an American approach and sometimes that doesn't always um, align completely to the personalities you might see in your own organisation. But I thought the behaviours were so atypical uh, and I enjoyed it. I thought yeah. it was, you know, it's it's almost a farce, but at the same time, it's quite realistic. Like all his books, Five Dysfunctions is a compelling fable with a simple but powerful message. 
He reveals the five dysfunctions which go to the very heart of why teams, even the very best ones, often struggle. If you're leading a team or trying to build a culture that thrives, this is a real must. Number four on the list of most recommended books by chiefs and gurus on the inner chief is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. It was recommended by our spiritual guru, Damien Price, co-founder of the real estate stylist, Sarah Chamberlain, and CEO of Leverage Yourself, Isabel Newsley. Damien thought we might all be surprised when he recommended this book over the Bible, and Sarah described this book as absolutely beautiful. Way back in episode 93, Isabel said this. There's so many, many amazing books out there. Um, of course, there's this famous book, The Power of Now, which I think is oh, absolutely yeah. powerful. This is a spiritual guidebook, and in the intensity and the logic and the chaos of modern business world, we can become really disconnected from ourselves and who we are. Remember, it's who you are that people engage with, not what you are. They don't engage with an engineer or a lawyer or an IT professional. They don't tell stories about that. They talk about who you are in the moment. And this book is a manual for understanding exactly how to live now. And I really think it is a must read for all leaders, and in fact, any professional who is out there in a modern, busy, busy world. And lastly, book five is Legacy by James Kerr. This gets mentioned regularly throughout our podcast on the topic of building high performance teams. Most recently, this was recommended by former AFL head coach and high performance coach of England rugby, Neil Craig. And this is what Neil had to say. Once again, I'm a great, I'm a great le- reader. I mean, I love reading because there's all these lessons that people yep. have been through that I don't have to go through if, I, if you know about them. Mm. Very, I very rarely read a full book. Uh, I often buy a book for a particular chapter that I might, I might see yes. in it. Yep. <clears throat> uh, I reckon uh, probably the one I have read uh, that stands out would be the you know the legacy one, which is oh sure yep. you know which is a um, about the All Blacks. There's a lot of good lessons in it, that, yep. you know. And mm. once again, it's like most things; it's not it's not there to necessarily agree with everything. Mm. To take that and uh, and you know and do it exactly as they talk about. But it just throws up, you know, I'm a, I'm a great believer that success leaves clues. So go and look at the serial successful companies yep. who have stood the test of time because they've jumped all the hurdles and, they yep. can, you know, and so they've been able to, to continue to perform for long periods of time. Go and talk to and look at individuals who have been successful over a long period of time and there'll be some common, common threads and trends there that are worth worth using in your own company or lifestyle or, or whatever you're doing. And so uh, I gravitate to those in my readings. I tend to gravitate, mm. uh, you know, to to the All Blacks. I'm just doing some stuff at the moment about uh, San Francisco, you know, the Warriors in the, in the NBA, sure. yeah. Um, yeah. Popovich with uh, San Antonio Spurs. You've got the New England Patriots. Yep. You know, it goes on and on and on. Yeah. Um, so success leaves clues and people are prepared to write about it, so mm. go, go and read about go it. Go and read about it. Now, I'm forever frustrated when the Wallabies, that's the Australian rugby team, lose to the Kiwis, the All Blacks, and I'm forever in awe of the wonderful culture that the All Blacks have created and stood for. The culture, the passion, the teamwork and performance, it's like no other sporting team in history. And this book really sums up what is at the heart of that and how you can apply that in your team. Like Neil Cray said, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Success leaves clues, and we should learn from these. So if you're trying to build a high-performance team culture, something that lasts the test of time, this is a great read for you. So Chiefs, if we look at all these books, what are the themes? You know, I, I sort of sat down and thought the key themes really are, number one, people come first. If you go all the way back to what some of the earliest episodes from Mike Pratt and Kevin Young, they absolutely drove home that people and relationships matter. So uniting and aligning your people is a single most important factor in building a successful team and a successful business. Number two, it's not all fun and games. Building a high performance team isn't easy. It takes focus, energy, commitment and accountability. 
but while high performance teams might be challenging, they're ultimately the most rewarding groups to be a part of. And really, of all the high performance teams I've been a part of, when there's really intense and big challenge, they are actually a lot of fun as well, but it's not all fun and games. There's a challenge to it. And the third thing that I think really comes through in these books is self-awareness. Whether it's for the benefit of the team or the business or our own personal lives, self-awareness, being able to self-regulate and understand how you tick is critical. It's important in business and any other part of your life. We must learn about us. We must debunk our own thinkings, our own bias and our own beliefs and take ownership of that. You can't live a life of purpose until you unpack you. And Chief, that's it for our first Winter Wisdom Series, the five top reads as recommended by our chiefs and gurus. Just to recap those for you, first and foremost was Good to Great and Built to Last by Jim Collins. Second off the rank was Sapiens and Homo Deus by Yuval Noah Harari. Third one was The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Fourth was The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And fifth was Legacy by James Kerr. I'll put all the links and resources for those in the show notes so you can go and check them out. Guess what, Chiefs? We've got three more killer winter wisdom sections or episodes coming up. We're going to talk all about mentors. We're going to talk about getting unstuck. And we're going to talk about the final wisdom and advice all the Chiefs had for you. Righto, Chief. In the meantime, head to the show notes and the links to get and buy those books now to boost your career. Righto, Chief. That sums it up for this week. As always, remember to stay... Epic.